Welcome back, Cubs. Dire Wolf here. And today, we need to talk about CNN, fake news, and the fourth estate. Honest and ethical journalism is important to a free society because information gives the power to the people to control their government. However, when news media unethically uses their power to alter and fabricate information to influence the people, when they lie and misrepresent to control the people, they become the enemy of freedom. When Donald Trump called CNN fake news and the enemy of the American people, he wasn't lying. They've been intentionally and blatantly lying to the American people to secure political power for themselves and the Democrat Party. Unfortunately, Unfortunately for them, Trump and many average people have been standing up to them and pointing out their lies. In this video I'll list some, but not all, though the most blatant of the almost daily lies and deceptions perpetrated by CNN. For the purpose of building the case that CNN's dishonest and sometimes criminal behavior does classify them as fake news and the enemy of the American people. But first let's hear CNN's best defense to the claim made by Trump that they are fake news. There is, we're not fake media. We're here to do a job. Respect the job, we respect yours. And if you're not going to respect us, we need to speak up. Hey, Chris, I mean, at what point does this become dangerous? And I'm not just talking about dangerous oh, in terms of tearing point. at the social fabric. I'm talking about dangerous as in a journalist gets hurt. Because I can tell you working overseas in war zones, you know, people are emboldened by the actions of this administration, emboldened by the all-out sort of declaration of war on the media. This so-called war that you are in is people pointing out to you how you've lied to them and tried to deceive them for years. It is a response. No one is encouraging physical violence, but how can you blame the people who are angry that you lied to them? You are the ones that threw the first punches by trying to use lies and half-truths to manipulate us. Calling out your lies is not an act of violence. It is standing up for truth. However, CNN, you your false reporting and lies has directly led to violence. Your multiple accusations of police shootings being unjustified and racially motivated even before the investigation has started. And in cases like the Michael Brown and Fernando Castile shootings, even after investigations clear the police officers of all wrongdoing, you still perpetuate the lie that the police officers were racist murderers. Your portrayal of black people being gunned down randomly in the streets by police officers has led to racial tensions and an increase of violence towards white people and police officers. Officer Mia Sota's familia was a 12-year veteran of the force and a mother of three children. Investigators say she was was shot by Alexander John Bonds, who was killed by police officers a short time later. Police calling this an unprovoked attack. Uh, no reason for this to happen. Uh, and this comes two years after the assassination to a member of two officers in central Brooklyn uh, by a gunman who's upset over the death of a black man, Eric Garner, in Staten Island, who died in a chokehold from police. Nick, hold the air! Metro! Metro, shots fired. Somebody just shot at my car. One more in Englewood. Shots fired. Shots fired, Metro. Three shots. Five shots, Metro. He is behind me shooting at me. Harris County Sheriff's Office Deputy Darren Goforth, 47, was refueling his police car when Miles shot him repeatedly and then later escaped in his Ford Ranger. They believe that Miles targeted Goforth just because of his uniform, which makes this a hate crime. Just hours after Goforth was ambushed, Black Lives Matter protesters marched at the Minnesota State Fair, violently chanting anti-cop rhetoric, pigs in a blanket, fry em like bacon. Harris County Sheriff Ron Hickman condemned this as some of the very dangerous national rhetoric that's out there today. Hickman said when the rhetoric ramps up to the point where calculated cold-blooded assassination of police officers happen, this rhetoric has gotten out of control. You've convinced generations of black people to hate and fear the police rather than working with and trusting them. And your demonizing of Trump and his supporters as being fascist has led to fear and violence in the streets in the form of BLM and Antifa, where many people have been assaulted and property destroyed because they believe they're fighting this great evil that you've convinced them that Trump is, which has led to two assassination attempts against Trump. This is only some of the violence and harm caused by the lies that you've made, CNN, that I'll be outlining in this video.
You are the ones that are guilty of incitement of violence through your lies and misinformation. Us pointing out your lies is not incitement of violence. Any anger you receive is the natural consequence to you first lying to them. People should be angry that you continued the lie that Michael Brown was surrendering with his arms in the air and that he was shot in the back by the police officer when that was proven false by three separate investigations. Thousands of Americans are marching in New York and Washington and across the country demanding a justice system that applies the same to everybody and honors our values. And you, uh, we want you to know that our hearts are out there marching with them. Michael Brown did not have his hands in the air. He was charging the police officer Darren Wilson when he was shot. You pushed a false narrative and you demonized a good cop who received multiple death threats and was forced to leave his job and his home. And that violent mob that you just justified and encouraged turned into a violent riot that attacked random white people on the streets and burned down businesses. Many people joined the protest because they believed they were under attack because of false reporting like yours. And this is not the only time. Every time a person of color is shot by a police officer, you echo the same claims of racism. And there's a cumulative effect. You are creating hatred and division in our country. Like when CNN reported the lie that Eric Gardner was choked to death by New York police. Even though there is clear evidence to the contrary. And this comes two years after the assassination to a member of two officers in central Brooklyn uh, by a gunman who's upset over the death of a black man, Eric Garner, in Staten Island. You create division in our country when you try to imply that only white men vote for Trump, or when you aggressively dismiss any member of a minority group that doesn't feed into your narrative or who disagrees with you. What's your opinion of the retweet of the Heidi Cruz and Melania Trump pictures? Well, I don't think we should start there. We should start with the fact that a uh, super PAC that supports no, 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 no. I, I want to know. I, I want to know Donald what your Trump's opinion wife. is. I'm not going to let and, you do that. Don, let I'm not going to let you do that. I'm going to answer that. Stop. I'm going to answer that. Stop. Let me tell you. Amarosa, stop. Amarosa, he's going okay, to come back stop. for you. Everybody, cut the mic. CNN routinely cuts off anyone who goes against their narrative on live television. They do this to secure an airtight echo chamber where only their interpretation of events are presented. They cherry pick and omit information in a way to lead you to the conclusion they want you to reach. So, if you're going to talk about Hillary Clinton, then bring Hillary Clinton's actions into it. Don't bring well, her I, husband's I, actions I, I, into I'd it. Let's bring Hillary Clinton's actions into it. Absolutely. But she was given the choice between standing with a serial sexual abuser. All right, Kurt. Stop, 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 stop. That's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. Can we stop that, please? It, it is not fair. It is not fair. It is a low blow. It is the, yes, I want to end it. So this is the lowest of the low, and it has nothing to do with Hillary Clinton. It is just a cheap shot that, can you please stop? Can we stop? Can we cut him off, please? Thank you. Can we end this? Their very deliberate misinformation and lies is irresponsible, breeds division in our society, and incites violence. I, at what point does this become reckless or irresponsible, Chris? They are they are trying to uh, take a a an honest mistake or not even a mistake and turn it into the norm as opposed to the rule as opposed to the exception which is the pushing of the russian narrative for months without evidence and continuing to push it even after your stories have been debunked is not a single mistake or even many mistakes it's a strategy but furthermore i believe your inability to report the truth is the norm. Do you remember when you selectively edited Not So Civil Smith's sister's words when she called for violence towards white people, but you very carefully selected only a few seconds of her entire speech to make it sound like she was calling for peace? Family and friends holding a vigil marked by prayers. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done. With his sister calling for peace. Don't bring the violence here and the ignorance here. Milwaukee police say they made multiple arrests overnight. Community. Take that shit to the suburbs. Burn that shit down. We need our shit. Y'all want to hurt somebody? Take that shit further out. Don't bring it here. Don't bring the violence here and the ignorance here. We need everything we fucking got. Ain't no calm, no crowd down. Y'all think we're going to get reckless out here? It's going to get way worse. Until we get justice, until motherfuckers start feeling where we're coming from, it's going to hit everyone. Do you think we forgot that you supported Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn in Gamergate? Or that you suggested in an article that games that cater towards women are fine, but games that cater towards men need to be changed to cater towards women also? Did you think we were going to forget that you parroted Anita's highly debunked and dishonest claims and then painted the majority of her critics as just being online trolls? And Gamergate isn't the only time you've taken people out of context and misrepresented their arguments. You cut up the Milo Yiannopoulos interview and tried to associate him with white nationalism, racism, and the alt-right, something he's always spoke out against. If we could just say sort of comfortably, D'Amigo, Spencer, and Milo are part of an industry of hate in this country. You know, he's allowed to say what he says, but when you normalize 
the type of hatred that he represents, that has consequences. There's multiple labels that one can put on Milo, in addition to provocateur, showman, and uh, jerk. So whether Milo considers himself actually alt-right or not, clearly those who represent the alt-right see what he's doing as an opportunity for them as well. Partly due to your misrepresenting and lying about his motives, the violence from leftist protesters at his events has increased. Your intentional misrepresentation of the arguments of your opposition is not a random occurrence. It is your standard operating procedure. You can't really fully realize how much the media lies until they start to report about you. And I just wanted to go over quickly just some of the lies that CNN has been telling. Starting with last week when CNN contacted me and wanted to do a live interview with me. And I said that I would be glad to do it. They told me what time it was going to be. They gave me an address and so forth. And so I was going to go down there and do a live interview with them. Well, then they basically called me and, and said that it was going to be postponed because of uh, Senator Ted Kennedy dying. And so they said they'd get back to me with a new time. Well, next thing I know, CNN is, is playing a story about me. And, and in that story, they said, well, you know, we're trying to get Pastor Anderson to be on the show, but, you know, he wasn't able to make it today. And we're trying to reach out to him so that he can be on here. You know, I was glad to go on, but they're the ones who canceled with me. So that was lie number one. Lie number two was in that very report, they stated, oh, we've confirmed that, you know, the Secret Service has interviewed Pastor Anderson. That is totally not true. The Secret Service has not interviewed me. No law enforcement has interviewed me because I haven't broken any laws. Why would the Secret Service or the police be knocking on my door when I haven't broken the law? I haven't done anything wrong. You know, I was exercising my First Amendment right and I didn't say anything that was against the law. And they even said it on the show as they asked their specialist. Their specialist from the Secret Service confirmed that I had not broken the law. But then it gets even worse. They contacted me over the weekend and said, well, we decided that we want to do a pre-recorded interview with you. I responded to that email by saying, I'm not interested in doing any pre-recorded interviews. I don't want to go down there and be interviewed for two hours so that I can spend two hours of my time and you can put two minutes of it on TV and I'm going to be edited and taken out of context. You know, I told them, I said, I'm only interested in doing a live interview, which is what they first contacted me about, you know, last week. I think it was the lady from Anderson Cooper 360 was the first one that contacted me about doing a live interview. And so she calls back this morning, a different lady from CNN and says, well, you know, we, we understand your concerns about why you don't want to do pre-recorded, but it's just we don't want to shortchange you because if we do a live interview, it's only going to be about four minutes. And we want to give you lots of time and we can use these clips and different segments. And I told her, I said, look, four minutes is fine and I'll let you talk about whatever you want. I'll let you guys control the conversation. I'm not going to say anything weird and uh, let's do it live. And uh, she basically called back later and said, oh, it's just we're concerned. We don't want you to have to come all the way down here just for four minutes. And so we're going to decline the interview. But the true story is they don't want me on their live because their goal is to make me look bad. Their goal is to take a clip here and a clip there just to get people mad at me. And sometimes when you're not willing to go through the work yourself to take someone out of context, you just repost a hit piece from another dishonest news agency. Like when you link to your audience the ridiculous article from the Wall Street Journal that called PewDiePie a Nazi, which either makes you incompetent for not independently verifying the article that you're linking, or you're aware was lies and you didn't care. Either way, it's fake news. Just like the time that Chris Cuomo said, it was illegal to read Clinton's emails on WikiLeaks. Unless you were a journalist, which means you had to get all of your news from them. Also interesting is remember, it's illegal to possess uh, these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. And in full disclosure, let's take a look at what is in there and what it means. Joining us now, CNN. Beside the fact that that's never been a law, I wonder why they don't want you to read those emails for yourself. I wonder why they want you to only hear it from them. It sounds like they're trying to hide something, and it sounds like they think it's their job to control what you know so they can control your opinion. He's doing exactly what he said he's going to do. Well, and I think that the dangerous, you know, edges here are that he's trying to undermine the media, trying to make up his own facts 
And it could be that while unemployment and uh, the, the economy worsens, he could have undermined the messaging so much that he can actually control right. uh, exactly what people think. And that if, is the that is our you, job. That is if our you. job. Interesting Fordian slip there. I think I might be onto something. What else would explain the repeated lies about Trump's presidential inauguration crowds being small, and then presenting pictures of the crowd far before the event started? They even post an article with a side-by-side -side comparison of the Obama inauguration and Trump inauguration, trying to claim that the Obama inauguration crowds were much larger, where in reality, actual pictures of the event show it was a packed house. Their aim was to sway public opinion against Trump by making him look less popular. They did the exact opposite for Hillary Clinton, by trying to make our crowds look bigger than they really were. And that is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to CNN's targeted campaign of lies trying to create controversy around Trump. The biggest lie that they still continue in part today is the Russian hacking. Among the false claims in the entire Russia saga, they stated that the Russians may have hacked actual voting machines and changed votes. That Trump or his campaign had colluded with the Kremlin that Trump had publicly challenged Putin to hack Hillary Clinton's illegal server, that Trump had received illegal gifts from foreign countries like Russia. These and a litany of other lies constantly flowing out of CNN on the same issue of Russia and collusion. To set the record straight on some of the most egregious lies, here's a breakdown of what really happened. First, the hacking, which is most likely perpetrated by the Russians, was not a hacking of voting machines or votes. It was a hacking of the DNC email server, which was achieved by nothing more complex than clicking the link inside of a phishing email. Thanks to the stupidity, of John Podesta. The end result of this hacking is that the emails belonging to members of the DNC and Hillary Clinton were released, showing their corruption and lies. This required no prior knowledge or help from Trump or his staff. And the only thing that changed votes was people knowing the truth about Hillary Clinton and the DNC. And when Trump stated that he hoped that Putin had Hillary's missing and deleted 30,000 emails, he wasn't encouraging Putin to hack her server, because the server had already been shut down and the emails deleted. But he was responding to the accusation that because she was operating a secret but unsecured server for official business while she was working as a Secretary of State overseas in Russia, that her server most likely already had been hacked due to her own incompetence. Which was later verified by the director of the FBI, James Comey. The servers are no longer hooked up and working. I mean, if they are, they're with the FBI. And, and people know that they're not available to hack anymore. I mean, it's like Donald Trump saying, oh, you know, I hope Putin goes get, and gets in a 1985 DeLorean and goes and finds those 33,000 emails. I mean, it's absolutely it's ridiculous. Not like that at all. I'll tell it's you, not like that I'll at tell all. you what scares me. What scares me is the fact that the emails are out there somewhere probably and that we could have a president that what? could be black. Blackmailed what, over them. What, That's wait, what wait, concerns you, me. It's you, about you our national invent, no, security. Hold on. You can't just invent things. You can't just invent things. I'm not things. inventing you just anything. Invented I, I mean, an this entire is... thing. The FBI has already come out with a report on Hillary Clinton's emails. What you just said was an invented thing. There's no 33,000 emails. There are other work related emails that they did not produce to state and that we did not find elsewhere and that are now gone because they deleted all emails they did not produce to state and the lawyers then cleaned their devices in such a way as to preclude complete forensic recovery. That are going to harm our national security. Hostile actors gained access to the private commercial email accounts of people with whom Secretary Clinton was in regular contact from her personal account. She also used her personal email extensively while outside the United States, including sending and receiving work-related emails in the territory of sophisticated adversaries. Given that combination of factors, we assess it is possible that hostile actors gained access to Secretary Clinton's personal email account. You, you know that there was an entire okay, year and a half. Is, we're not going to relitigate that. Joy, no, Amy, we're not going to relitigate that. Let you can't talk. make things up. And the lie that he was receiving illegal gifts from countries like Russia was based on the fact that diplomats from around the world, including Russia, would spend the normal price to spend nights in hotels owned by his family company. His family owned this company before he became president. They're paying exactly the same price as anyone else using the same room. This is not them giving him a gift. This is them buying a service from his family-owned company that he no longer manages. And lastly, verified again by James Comey, Trump was never under investigation for collusion. And CNN is very aware that there's nothing to the Russian investigation, and they are intentionally lying, based on the undercover videos taken of James O'Keefe and Van Jones, both saying that there's nothing to the Russian investigation, and that they're only pursuing the issue for views. Whole Russia shit is just like bullshit. Could be bullshit. I mean, we, it's mostly bullshit right now. Like, we don't have any big giant proof. I just feel like they don't really have it, but they they want to keep digging. Mm -hmm. 
And so I think the president is probably right to say, like, look, you are witch hunting me. So you believe like the Russia thing's a little crazy, right? Even if Russia was trying to swing an election, I, we try to swing their elections. We're in our CIA and doing shit all the time. Like we're out there trying to manipulate governments. Like you win because you know the you you, you know the game and you play it right. She didn't play it right. The more I see it, constantly like Russia this, Russia that. Because it's ratings. Because it's ratings. Our ratings are incredible right now. So it's I mean I understand it's all ratings, right? Oh, it's a business. So it's, it's a business. People are like, the media has like an ethical... But... All the nice, cutesy little ethics that used to get talked about in journalism school, you're just like, that's adorable. <laughs> that's adorable. <laughs> yeah, this is a business. Especially cable news. You know, cable news isn't the New York Times, and it's not, it's not even like NBC News. It's, it's, I mean, NBC News still... It's 20 million viewers a night. Cable news is getting a million. So, um, like they gotta, they gotta do what they gotta do to make their money, I think. And so I love the, I love the news business, but I, I find it so I'm fascinating. very cynical about it. At the same time, so are most of my colleagues. Their complete disregard for the truth, for the purpose of personal enrichment, led to them publishing the notoriously false BuzzFeed Trump dossier, which was riddled with spelling errors and factual inconsistencies and had no verifiable sources, and then got cut lying, saying that they did not get their unverified documents sourced from BuzzFeed when in fact they did. Among the lies in the dossier that CNN was willing to publish without any sort of evidence, other than saying that people were in places where there was evidence that they were somewhere else, the 30-page report alleges that high Kremlin officials colluded with Trump, offered multi-million dollar bribes, accumulated compromising evidence on Trump's sexual exploits, including prostitutes and golden showers. More importantly, it claimed that Russia and the Kremlin had been cultivating and influencing Trump for years. The dossier was opposition research written by Christopher Steele, a British MI6 agent, who was hired and paid by some very wealthy anti-Trump Republicans and Democrats. And Mr. Steele says he sourced the information inside his dossier from Russian agents. Steele leaked it to BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed published it, and then CNN published it. But one problem, it's fake. Christopher Steele himself said that his entire dossier was unverifiable. U.S. intelligence agencies and the FBI director James Comey stated that there was no proof that anything in the dossier actually happened. But there was proof of things that were stated in the dossier, like Trump's lawyer meeting in Prague with Kremlin officials, did not happen because his lawyer was somewhere else and he had proof. And when they were confronted with the fact that they had published accusations they had not even attempted to verify, that turned out to be false, they said that they had verified someone else by the same name, even though that person is not a lawyer for Trump and also did not go to the meeting. And of course, they couldn't present any evidence this doppelganger even existed. About Michael Cohen, Trump's uh, official corporate lawyer, making a trip to the Czech Republic. My reporting suggests that uh, people did try to run that down, they did. and they concluded that it was a different Michael Cohen. CNN reported on this meeting, and then was threatened with a lawsuit and had to retract the story. CNN apologized and said that the article did not meet their standards for journalistic integrity. That's funny, I didn't think you had any. They only retracted the story and fired the three persons responsible because they were being sued for libel, not because they care about the truth. The contents of the dossier were laughable and ridiculous. Even MSNBC refused to publish it because there was no evidence and only only unverifiable claims. But you just published fake news. We just published a dossier. No, I think that's a really... Why is that not a fair... Why is that an unfair description? And CNN has not learned their lesson about not publishing fake news. Most recently, they reported that when Trump Jr. in the past met with a Russian lawyer who promised to have some opposition research on Clinton, which she may or may not have given to him. However, he claims that she only had vague, unsubstantiated claims about investments in Russia. And then CNN had the gall to claim that Trump Jr., who may or may not have received opposition research on Hillary Clinton, from someone who may may or may not have been working for the Russian government. They say because of that, he's guilty of treason. 
treason which comes with a maximum penalty of the death penalty. Even if we overlook for a moment that receiving opposition research from another country, even one that is your enemy, does not meet the legal definition of treason, nor is it illegal, and all the laws that they're saying that he might have broken refer to receiving money or things of value. The statute that they're touting, in context, is obviously referring to another government providing material support for a candidate's campaign being illegal, not information. For Trump Jr. to be guilty of treason, Congress would literally have to vote to include what he's done as being treasonous. They would need to change the law and create a new precedent. But put that to the side for a second, and let me remind you that CNN just published a dossier that was written by a foreign intelligence agent who was paid to go find dirt on Trump, and whom sourced information for his dossier from agents of the Russian government. If CNN thinks what Trump's son did was treason, then what they've done is ten times worse. Because by their own logic, the politicians, both Republican and Democrats, that hired Christopher Steele will be guilty of treason as well. Not only did they solicit opposition research on Trump from the Russians, but they also shared it with the UK. Likewise, when a foreign agent, Christopher Steele, approached BuzzFeed with the Russian dossier information, they too would be guilty of the same thing that Trump Jr. did. Except it'd be far worse because they chose to publish lies from the Russians that they knew they could not verify that they knew would harm the sitting president of the United States, which sounds a lot more like treason than receiving information on a candidate. Both BuzzFeed and CNN knowingly published lies and information that could not be independently verified that was sourced from Russian intelligence agencies with the intent to malign the character of the sitting president of the United States. And both news agencies were forced to retract their stories. To put it simply, what Trump Jr. did was not legally or morally treason. It does not matter where the origin of truth comes from, even from your enemy. You should not choose to remain ignorant just because the truth comes from your enemy. It is okay to listen to them, however, because they are enemy, of course you'd want to verify what they're telling you is actually true. If what Trump Jr. did was treason, CNN and many of their colleagues and friends would also be implicated in the same crime. But no, receiving the dossier was not treason. However, knowingly publishing lies from the Russian government that was most likely intended to further destabilize the political landscape in the United States is fake news. I think of anything more fake news coming out of CNN than their deliberate attempts cover up some of the disgusting things that Hillary Clinton has done to protect the perpetrators and attack the victims of sexual abuse. Hillary Clinton blamed the victim. Number 101 when you're dealing with rape cases, don't blame the victim. She blamed a 12-year-old girl, a 6th grade 12-year-old girl, of seeking the attention of older men and fantasizing about being with older men. There is audio... Wait, we, we haven't corroborated any of this, so, I mean, I, I just think you should be very... It's I mean, widely reported. It's but widely wi reported. Widely reported. So is the National Enquirer widely reported. We, we, we can go. Mean anything. Not, can... It's not on this network, I would point out. Hillary Clinton had accused her of uh, some sort of uh, 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 culpability in her own attack. Widely reported. We, we, widely we reported. can go. Mean anything. Not, can... It's not on this network, I would point out. Wait, we, we, we haven't corroborated any of this. Clinton wrote of the victim, I have been informed that the complainant is emotionally unstable with a tendency to seek out older men and engage in fantasizing. Wait, we, we haven't corroborated any of this. It's not on this network, I would point out. Mrs. Clinton seems to admit she knew the defendant was guilty. Wait, we, we haven't corroborated any of this. It's not on this network, I would point out. And I do think the audio really changes it, where she's saying he took a polygraph, and then she says that it forever, you know, destroyed killed, her, destroyed belief, her faith, faith in polygraph. Yeah. She, she, she thought he she's was admitting guilty. that he's guilty. Right. Yes. That's I think a whole it's a question. problem. I think it really pokes a it, hole in that narrative. No, Dan, it's not on this network, I would point out. Meanwhile, while CNN is trying to cover up what Hillary Clinton and her husband had done, they had no problem giving wall-to-wall -wall coverage for months to sexual abuse accusations from more than a dozen women over a very short period, with very little to no evidence, and the evidence that did exist was unverified. I'm not saying it is wrong to cover these accusations. He was a candidate, and these accusations were relevant. However, there was a double standard. If you're going to cover the possible misdeeds of one candidate, then you should definitely cover the proven misdeeds of the other. And CNN should not have overstated the importance of accusations without evidence, especially since many of them magically disappeared after the election. And Donald Trump was able to provide evidence that cast some serious doubt on the claims made by these women, such as the case of Summer Zervos, where he released emails showing that his accuser, who apparently was traumatized years before by his alleged actions, these emails that she sent only a few months prior, were of her praising him and saying what a good man he was and that she supported him and his supporters. And the accuser's cousin, who was an eyewitness to the alleged sexual assault, says that Summer Zervos 
Servos is lying and that what she said never happened. CNN reported early and often when accusations like these were made, however barely touched on them when they were proven false. By ignoring this evidence, they leave their audience with a false impression that the claims still might be true. CNN ignoring this could be dishonesty or it could be just their general ineptitude. Because you see, CNN is fake news not only because they lied to us, but also because they are fundamentally out of touch with the American people. Do we even know who is this 4chan? Do we even know who is this 4chan? The system administrator who knew his way around and how to hack things. It seems like this was not a, re a big effort, but was more of a, I have these usernames, I know of this loophole, this security loop. They don't even know what 4chan is. They thought it was a person, and they're the ones telling us the news. And of course, when they're not busy lying about or misunderstanding the news, they also fabricate the news. Like that time they got caught red-handed on live camera coaching their post-debate focus group on what to say. America's great. America's great. All right, so I want to ask you, what was it about Hillary Clinton's argument that resonated with you following Donald Trump's defense of the video? She stated that America is already great, um, and I tend to agree with that. Though we are slow in progressing in a number of areas, we are progressing, and we need to continue the momentum. CNN did a focus group. Unfortunately, oh, it's so sad. They got caught trying to convince people and find the right people so they could give a phony vote. CNN is a disgrace. There's also that time they got caught staging a photo op of demonstrators on a police line. This shows that they can't just show the world as it is. They have to show it through their sterile interpretation of the world. Instead of showing the news, they create the news. Uh, reporting. What I want to show you now, viewers, um, is a wonderful scene uh, to understand exactly how people feel here on the streets of London, so close to what were such brutal attacks last night. Or that time when they inexplicably misidentified Sam Hyde, the comedian, as the shooter in the Oregon University shooting. They announced Sam Hyde, who was not present or involved, as being the shooter. Their source, you ask? Social media posts that they made no attempt to verify. And this fake news isn't even malicious. It's incompetent. What you need to understand is, lies and incompetence are not a rare occurrence with CNN. They are the norm. It is what they do. That is if our you, job. That is if our you. job. Daily they repeat, thoroughly debunked claims such as the gender wage gap. To be clear, the claim of the gender wage gap is not the product of a scientific study, but has been proven wrong by multiple scientific studies, and continuing to repeat it is dishonest. CNN also blatantly lied saying that there's no sanctuary cities in America, while in reality, according to the Center of Immigration Studies, there's currently 276 sanctuary cities in 43 states. They were also quick to criticize Trump for calling the New York bombing a bombing, before the investigation had progressed very far, even though it was very clearly a bombing. And when they broadcasted Hillary Clinton's initial comments on the event, they edited out the fact that she also called it a bombing around the same time Trump did. They attacked Trump for jumping to a logical conclusion, and ignored the fact that Hillary also jumped to the same conclusion. And then they published idiotic articles like the one claiming that because Trump was opposed to voting rights for felons, that it would hurt his appeal with black voters, which is basically equating felons with black people. If you think that being pro-black and anti-felon voting rights is contradictory, then you're a racist assuming that they are both the same category. Another example of their bias for Hillary and against Trump is that they would edit out pro-Trump shirts, and they've done this on multiple occasions. Even worse, hacked emails from the DNC showed that Donna Brazile, while working at CNN, multiple times gave debate and town hall questions to Hillary prior to the events. They did not do this for any other candidate, and they did it to give an advantage to Hillary over both Bernie and Trump. When CNN was confronted with this, they did fire Donna Brazile because they had to have a scapegoat, but they didn't fire anyone else that was involved. To deciding. We'll see. Deciding. We couldn't help her any more than we have. <laughs> I know. You know, I mean, she's she's I know. got just a free ride so far from the media. We're the biggest ones promoting her campaigns. CNN also lied, saying that Trump had incited violence towards Hillary Clinton on one of his speeches about the Second Amendment, and that the Secret Service had to talk to him about it. The Secret Service responding, saying that they never felt the need, nor did they ever speak to Donald Trump about any incitement to violence, nor was he under any sort of investigation for doing so. What Trump actually had said that produced this faux outrage was that he thought that Second Amendment voters could defeat Hillary by voting for him. No honest or rational person would see that as incitement to violence. All of these lies, and many more that I don't have 
have time to list for you in this video are the reasons why the trust in the media are at all time low, lower than Congress and lower than the president. And that's across all political backgrounds because you're not called fake news because people disagree with your politics. People call you fake news because you lie and you come by the title honestly. I believe with the evidence that I put forth here, I have proven that CNN is indeed fake news. Any one of these lies standing alone could be forgiven. However, all of them together and the many more that they represent make a trend. Now for the question, is CNN the enemy of the American people? You could say that based on the intentional lies and misdirection of CNN that they've caused violence and harm to the United States. But I believe the best way to show whether or not they are the enemy of the average American is to show how they treat the average American. I believe the best example of that is how they treated the person who made the WWE Trump wrestling gif meme. The story goes like this. A Reddit user took a video of when Trump had been on the WWE and they spliced CNN's logo over the face of the person that Trump was beating up. The gif became popular, was passed around until another user took it, made some minor changes, and then reposted it. Donald Trump found this edited version, found it funny, and posted it on his Twitter account. The people at CNN did not find it funny at all. They said it was incitement to violence against the media. They tried to criticize Trump for the meme, but no one cared, so they decided to take a different tact and go after the person who created the gif in the first place. CNN staffer Andrew Kaczynski, or K-File on Twitter, investigated all the information available on all the social media accounts belonging to the user Han Asshole Solo, and discovered his true identity. That's right, a multi-million dollar company spent time, money, and resources to investigate a private person who is not a public figure who made a meme about them. Then K-File sent him an email. Whatever was in the email, it scared this person enough that he immediately took all his content down and posted an apology. And according to CNN's own statements, when K-File called him later on, he begged that they not release his information. I believe the only reason why Han Asshole Solo would feel the need to beg not to have his information released was because something in the email implied or stated that they would. In fact, any time a powerful company like CNN contacts a private person who is not a public figure and whom intends to be anonymous, and that company tells that person, we know who you are and we are a reporting a story about you. That in and of itself is an act of intimidation. It is not his fault that Trump decided to repost a version of the meme that he created. And it's not a fair standard to say that a news company can single out and harass any private person just because Trump agrees with their satire. After their phone call, CNN published this article explaining how they hunted down the individual, including this segment which removes all doubt that their intent was to intimidate him and anyone else who might make memes like him. They wrote, CNN is not publishing Han Asshole Solo's name because he's a private citizen, and this is the most important part, who issued an extensive statement of apology and showed his remorse by saying he has taken down all the offending posts. So the requirement for not having his information released was that he make an extensive apology and remove all of the posts they didn't like, as well as promising never to repeat the ugly behavior on social media again. And then two lines down they say, CNN reserves the right to publish his identity should any of that change. Which is very clearly CNN threatening to dox this person. Person, opening him up to violence and harassment from regressive hate mobs. If he ever says anything or posts any satire, they disagree with. And if you're curious of their motivation, look at this line here. They thought it was important to highlight that this person said that he could be an example so that other people do not do what he did. K-File highlighted and picked this one small statement out of a page-long apology because this is what they want. They didn't just want to blackmail and intimidate one person who disagreed with them. They wanted to use this example as a way to intimidate everyone else who might do the same thing. What they've done is criminal. Blackmail is a crime of threatening to reveal embarrassing, disgraceful, or damaging information about a person to the public, to their family, spouse, or associates, unless money is paid to purchase silence. 18 U.S. Code 873 Blackmail, which is a code that CNN is in breach of, reads this way. Whoever under threat of information or consideration for not informing against any violation of any law of the United States demands or receives any money or valuable thing shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than one year or both. The valuable thing that CNN extorted from him was his apology and his silence for their own PR. All those involved are guilty of the crime of blackmail, and if they ever were to face justice, would face up to one year in jail and fines. I would also caution CNN, if they ever choose to dox this person in the future, that the penalties for doxing, though they vary widely from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, generally carry a jail sentence of over a year and more than $10,000 in fines. Also, I promise people like me will crucify you for every last time he gets calls, harassed, or swatted. Any irritation or loss of money that you cause him, you'll be sued for 10 times more. 
and CNN, if you think a little guy like him couldn't afford the lawyers to beat you, don't worry. There's enough people out there with lots of money who hate CNN for all the lies you've fed us. We will make sure that his legal defense is very well funded. Because Han Asshole Solo is like any one of us, and if we let you bully him, then you could bully any one of us. We have to stand up to CNN. We know that CNN and K-File have doxxed people in the past and destroyed their lives. It was Andrew Kaczynski who released the regressive hate mob on Justina Sacco for tweeting out an edgy joke. The ensuing witch hunt got her fired and did some irreparable damage to her life. They don't care who they hurt or how they hurt them. So in answer to the question, yes, CNN is fake news, and yes, CNN is the enemy of the American people. Because of that, I encourage you to join me in taking this list of sponsors who currently advertise on CNN, and tell them how you believe that it reflects poorly upon their products to run their ads next to the filth that is CNN. The contact numbers and mailing address for these companies, as well as all the sources for everything that I've mentioned here, will be listed in the description of this video. Thank you very much. Direwolf out.